Hey guys, I'm Anthony Fontana. In this video, we're going over the IRS offer in compromise. All right, to start off, what is the IRS offer in compromise? Well, it's a program the IRS offers for taxpayers to settle their debt for less than what they owe. Now, spoiler alert here, most people don't qualify for this program. You gotta think about this logically as to why. With this program, the IRS is gonna settle your taxes for less than what you owe. Now, everyone else is paying the full amount in their taxes, and why do you get to pay less than what you owe? Well, the reason you would be able to pay less than what you owe with this program is because you truly don't have the ability to pay the full amount. And the IRS is going to take a look at you. They're going to nitpick your situation to make sure that you truly don't have the ability to pay in full. So the next question leads into, right, how do we qualify for a program like this? What is the IRS going to look at? All right, well, well, first and foremost, some boring basic stuff. They're going to make sure that you are tax compliant. Now, what does that mean? It means that you have filed at least the last six years of your tax returns. And I would say most importantly, you are up to date with your current tax payments, right? I'm making this video right now, 2023. So that means that if you're a business, you've paid all the, the quarterly tax payments to date for 2023, and or if you are an employee, you've withheld the proper amount year to date with your taxes. Now, the reason for this is that the IRS doesn't want, let's say, us to settle your taxes and then you continuing to owe. So they prioritize that you pay your current taxes versus your back taxes. We don't want to be chasing our tail, so to speak. All right, so what does the IRS look at to see if we qualify for an offer and compromise? These are just the basics, but it's good stuff. Number one, they're going to take a look at your assets, right? This is all assets that you have. We're looking at retirement accounts, bank accounts, uh, value in your real estate property if you have one, vehicles, etc. So what they're going to look at is if, let's say, if you were to hypothetically sell all of your assets, pay off the loans on those, and what do you have net left over? Does that satisfy your tax debt, right? Is that more than what your tax debt is? And if it is, you're not going to qualify for an offer and compromise. So I guess you could turn the video off now. But if it doesn't, right, then we move on to our next step where we look at your income and what the IRS says, your necessary living expenses. Now, the IRS has a whole bunch of rules around what is necessary living expenses. And I do have a video that goes through in depth on how that works section of this offer and compromise work. So be sure to check that out. It's the how to fill out the form 433A OIC, which I go over it a little bit later, but it's one of the forms that we have to fill out to file an offer and compromise. So be sure to check out that video if you want to look in detail on how those necessary living expenses works. In layman's terms, how the necessary living expense section works is they give you the basics, right? Housing, utilities, car payments, food, clothing, health insurance, current tax payments, um, and there's a couple more. So be sure to check that out. Now, if you're looking to go over an in-depth analysis into your case, be sure to schedule a consultation in the link below. All right, so the next step in determining if you qualify for an offer and compromising is finding out the 10-year statute or what we call the CSED collection statute expiration date for your tax debt. The IRS has 10 years to collect on your tax debt. And that clock starts running either the day that you filed the return and or the day the tax gets assessed. So let's say it's a 2015 tax return. You file it generally April of 2016. 2016 plus 10, 2026 is generally when that 10-year clock runs up. Now, the reason this is important is the IRS wants to know what you have left over after your living expenses, right? If there's anything left over there, your disposable income, right? 
If we multiply that out by how many months are left at, over in your tenure, tenure clock there, can that pay off the debt? This is real important to know, not only for the offer and compromise, but also for like a payment plan situation. So we do have to find out what is that collection statute expiration date, that 10-year date. Now, again, if you want to go through an in-depth analysis into your situation, be sure to schedule a consultation with a link in the description below. All right, so the next step is how do you file an offer and compromise, right? You've made the decision, I qualify for something like this, now let's get it done. Well, there's some paperwork we gotta fill out. But number one, I would say there is a good resource to this that you should check out before kind of moving forward with filing this, and this is the Form 656 Offer and Compromise, their booklet, okay? It looks something like this. It's available online. I'll include a link to this in the description below, but it's got everything here. And what it's gonna say is first and foremost, you gotta fill out one of these forms, 433-AOIC. Now, I do have a video that I go through this in detail, line by line, on my YouTube channel. It is in this side, I believe. There it is, right there. So be sure to check that out to on how to fill this form 433A OIC. The next step would be is if you have a business that's a corporation, S Corp, C Corp, partnership, LLC, then you will also need to fill out this form 433B OIC in conjunction with 433A OIC for this offer and compromise. Now, I don't have a video out yet for this, uh, but that will come soon. Once you get both of those forms filled out, or at least the first form filled out, the next one will be the, the form 656, which is the actual contract of the offering compromise. Now, I do have a link on how to fill this thing also up there. Be sure to check it out if you are you know need some help filling this thing out. Like I said earlier, the IRS is going to nitpick your situation if you file this offer and compromise. And what else are they going to be looking for? They're going to be looking for three months of your you know personal bank statements. If you got a business, they're going to look for the last six months of those bank statements. They're going to want a copy of your most recent pay stubs, or at least generally the last three pay stubs you got. Um, if you got investments like brokerage accounts or retirement accounts they're gonna want like the last statement of those accounts they're gonna want a copy of the most recent statement from any other sources of income that you have let's say like Social Security or disability something like that they're gonna want copies of your most recent statements from any lenders that's a mortgage and or car they're gonna want to see what is the loan payoff what is your monthly payments and what is the current balance? If you're paying any state taxes on like an installment agreement, they're gonna want verification of this. So like a letter from the state showing the balance and how much you're paying every month. Now, if there's any like specific circumstances that you have, I highly, highly, highly recommend that you do do a cover letter with this offer and compromise explaining any of those specific circumstances. For instance, I just had an offer get accepted where the taxpayer lives near DC. She, li she works inside DC and she has to drive to the metro and then take the metro in. So we are claiming a car expense, the vehicle expense, and the public transportation expense. And generally, you're not allowed to claim two, right? You either have the car or you take public transportation. But in her case, specific case, that's the only way for her to get to work is to, to drive and to take the metro. So we had to explain that in our cover letter. If you're making alimony payments or child like uh, child support payments, you're going to want to submit copies of like the court documents stating that you are required to make these payments. And that's how we file the offer and compromise. We kind of get all this stuff all together in one big packet, and then we mail this off. And where do we mail this to? This is straight from that form 656 booklet. These are the addresses that you're going to mail your offer and compromise packet to, depending upon where you reside. So if you're in any of these states, right, it's going to go to Memphis. Any of these states, it's going to Holtzville, New York. One key thing to note when you mail this in, you will need to get this certified with a return receipt, right? You want to know that the IRS did receive this and when they received it. Now, the IRS will, once they kind of 
process the fact that they received it, they will send you a letter saying that, hey, they received it. But you will also want a copy of a return receipt from the mail just in case you know something happens. So the next question is, how long does the IRS offer and compromise process take? I generally say it's about a year. It really depends. Now, the IRS does say if it takes more than two years, they will automatically accept the offer. I've personally never seen this happen, but I've heard of other professionals where they've had clients and cases where this has happened, but it's very, very rare. So on average, it's about a year. Now, it could be less than a year. Generally, if the debt is is lower, the IRS will process these things faster. And if it's more of a higher tax debt, you know, they got to they got to go, kind of go through more procedures to to accept an offer with a higher tax debt. But again, generally, it's about a year from the time you file to the time the examiner gets assigned and they accept the offer. All right, so some important things to note about the IRS offer and compromise. There is an application fee you're going to have to submit with the offer and compromise packet. It's $205, so there'll be separate check just for this application fee. Be sure to check out that Form 656 booklet on how to make out the checks and what to write on the check for the uh, for this application fee. Now, you can waive this application fee if you are what we consider low income. What is low income? Well, here's straight from the 656. This is low income currently, right? How many people in your on your tax return, essentially, how many people you claim, size of the family, how much your annual income is depending upon where you live. So if you are below these thresholds, you can go ahead and not have to submit the $205 application fee. All right, so the payment terms. There are two options for the payment terms, which I go over in my video on, on how to file the form 656. There's either the lump sum cash or there's a periodic payment. The lump sum cash, you have to put down 20% when you go to file the offer and compromise, unless you're considered low income. The balance of the 80% has to be paid within five months of the offer getting accepted. So it's essentially about like a year, year and a half from the time you file the offer and compromise. Whereas the periodic payments, it's generally like a higher offer, but you make payments during the application process. So you would make your first periodic payment with the filing of the offer and compromise. And then every month thereafter, you would have to make a payment. Now, if you're considered low income, you don't got to make any payments during the evaluation period of the offer and compromise. Essentially, until it gets accepted, then you'll have to start making those payments. Something super important here. All right. If your offer does get accepted, the next five years, you got to be a good kid. Okay. You got to file on time and pay your taxes on time. That's generally right April of the following year. You got to file and pay on time. An extension is an extension to file, not an extension to pay. So keep that in mind, right? The next five years, you got to be a good kid. You got to file and pay on time if your offer gets accepted. Now, if you miss or late on filing or paying any of the five years after you file an offer and compromise, the IRS could go back and essentially blow up your offer and compromise. They'll throw back all the tax debt that you had and they'll say, no, this is part of the terms. Now you got to pay it, pay it all off. So super important. If you get an offer and compromise accepted, the next five years, you file and pay on time. Again, that's April of the following year. File and pay. I would not file extensions. Just try to get it all done by April. You got all your taxes settled for less than you owe. Now you got to be a good kid, okay? Now if you file an offer and compromise and during this evaluation period, you have to file your next year's tax return and there's a refund on that return. Keep in mind, the IRS is going to keep that refund. They're not going to send it back to you. Now, if you file an offer and compromise, the IRS may file a notice of federal tax lien at any time during the evaluation process of the offer and compromise. So keep that in mind if that's something important for you. During the offer evaluation or the analysis period, right, that one year that it kind of takes until the examiner gets assigned and this thing gets uh, accepted and or rejected, right, the IRS will what they call toll that 10-year statute for them to collect. What does that mean? They essentially just put that 10-year on pause. So if it takes 10, if it, if it takes about a year for the offer and compromise, let's say unfortunately it gets rejected, right? If it takes a year for the IRS to say, okay, now it's rejected, they're gonna add that one year to the back end of your 10-year statute. So it's now essentially 11 years. 
so to speak, for that tax debt to expire. Now you do have the right to appeal your offer if it got rejected for what you believe was in some incorrect issue. And an appeals officer would get assigned and they generally work their case pretty quickly. So again, keep that in mind. You do have the right to appeal a rejected offer. All right, so there it is, the offer and compromise. If you found the video be helpful, help me out with the algorithm here. Hit that like, share, subscribe button for more videos just like this as I do have a lot of videos where I go through actual cases and all the paperwork, right? that we got an offer accepted and or rejected, right? So you can learn about how I personally do this with clients. If you want an in-depth detail analysis into your case to see if you qualify, be sure to schedule a consultation with me with a link in the description below. Thank you so much, guys.